All right, what's good, everybody? Um, just to do, going to do a quick chapter four review video since we won't be able to do it in class. Uh, so I hope you're watching and I hope that you get to see some example problems before you take your chapter four test. Okay, uh, just real quick, a warm up. Uh, find the values of X. Okay, always think what type of relationship are your angles and then create an equation. All right, these are consecutive interior angles, and we know that the relationship between those are supplementary, so that means that they have to add together to equal 180. X plus 73 must equal 180. And to find X, we subtract 73, not 7X. We subtract 73. Those cancel, and we get X is equal to 180 minus 73 is 107. Over here, these are alternate exterior angles, and those angles are congruent to each other. So to set up our equation here, we just take each angle, x plus 14, and we set it equal to the other angle, 147. Subtract 14, subtract 14 from both sides. Those cancel. x is equal to 147 minus 14. 7 minus 4 gives you 3. 3 minus 1 gives you 3. And 1 minus 0 gives you 133. Okay. Okay, things you need to know for the test, uh, definitions of the special angle pairs. Remember, vertical and core, or sorry, vertical and linear pairs, uh, those are reviewed from chapter one. The new angle relationships from this chapter are alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding consecutive interior and consecutive exterior. Uh, please know, remember that these top four, these are congruent to each other. So similar in that example problem we just did. When they're congruent, you set them equal to each other in an equation. These bottom three are supplementary. Uh, and again, like that example problem we just did, you're going to add two angles together and set them equal to 180, uh, which is basically what I just said here. For slope, always remember y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Slope is m. Slope of parallel lines are equal. They are identical, exactly the same. And slope of perpendicular lines are the opposite reciprocal. Remember, opposite reciprocal means that we flip the numbers and flip the sign. If one's positive, the other has to be negative. If one is negative, the other has to be positive. And then you flip the numbers on top of the fractions. Okay, so, so like I said, this is all just a bunch of example problems. Okay, so if we go through angle one and what are corresponding, remember corresponding means same position. So I know that this is kind of diagonal. Uh, we see that angle one is exactly to the left. So we look down here, what angle is also to the left and we see that angle five. So angle one and five are corresponding. Okay, let me erase those for the next problem. Angle four and what are consecutive interiors? So remember, consecutive means same side, interior means inside of the hallway. We see that angle four is, uh, I guess, above to the right, since it's diagonal of the transversal. Inside and also on the same side has to be angle six. Okay, angle three and what are alternate interior? So remember, alternate means opposite sides. So what's on the opposite side of three? It is also angle six. And the last one, angle one and what are alternate exterior? So again, alternate means opposite. Now we're just on the outside. We see that eight is alternate exterior. All right, so uh, you will have, I believe it's five questions very similar to this on the test. Uh, you'll have, I think it was eight questions that are like these on the test. Okay, find the uh, find the value of x. Once again, uh, what is the relationship? These are alternate interior angles. That means they are congruent to each other. Alternate interior congruent. So we set up our equation. 3x is equal to 75. We divide by 3, divide by 3. x is equal to 75 divided by 3 is 25. Okay, here, these are consecutive interior. That means they are supplementary, which means that they add together to equal 180. So 4x plus 84 is equal to 180. All right, we subtract 84 from both sides. Those cancel. We end up with 4x is equal to 96, right? 180 minus 90, 84 is 96. Then we divide by 4 on both sides, divide by 4. And we get x is equal to 4 goes into 9 one, or sorry, twice. 
And then with the remainder of 1, so 16, 4 goes into 16, 4. So x is equal to 24 there. x equals 25 over there. Okay, once again, same example problems, just with different numbers, different angles. Alternate exterior, those are congruent. These are corresponding. They will also be congruent. So set them equal to each other. 4x plus 5 is equal to 137. Subtract 5 from both sides. 4x is equal to 137 minus 5 is 132. Divide by 4, divide by 4. X is equal to 4 divided by 4 goes into 13 three times. That's 12, which gives us a remainder of 1. And 4 goes into 12 again three times. So X is equal to 33. There's your answer. Here, again, we said they're congruent, so we set them equal to each other. So 2X plus 5 is equal to 135. Subtract 5, subtract 5. 2x is equal to 135 minus 5 is 130. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x is equal to 130 divided by 2. Uh, 2 goes into 13 six times. That's 12, which gives us a remainder of 1, which brings us to 10. 2 goes into 10 five times. So x is equal to 65. Okay, again, same similar example problems. These are consecutive interior. That means they are supplementary. All right, so that means we're going to take 5x plus 20, and we're going to add it now to 80 and set that equal to 180. So a little bit different. These combine to give you 5x plus 100 equals 180. All right, we subtract 100 from here on both sides. Those cancel, we end up with 5x equals 80. We divide by 5, divide by 5, and we end up with x is equal to 5 goes into 8 once, which gives us a remainder 3. 5 goes into 36 times, so x is equal to 16. Okay, now these are alternate exterior, so these are congruent angles. We set them equal to each other. We take 3x minus 8, and we set it equal to 70. We add 8 to both sides, 3x is equal to 78, and then we divide by 3, divide by 3, x is equal to 3, goes into 7 twice, gives us a remainder of 1, which creates 18, 3 goes into 18 six times, which gives us x equals 26. Okay, determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Uh, there's four questions here. You will also have four questions similar to this on your test. Uh, remember, parallel lines always have the same slope, right? Perpendicular lines always have the opposite reciprocal. I'm not going to write the whole thing. Opposite reciprocal. Remember, same, literally, that just means the exact same. Uh, same number and same sign. Opposite reciprocal means opposite signs, and reciprocal means that you flip the numbers. So let's take, all you have to do is take a look at the slope. We don't even care about the y-intercept, so just take a look at the slope here. We see that slope is 2, slope is negative 2. It's definitely not the same. They are opposites because one's positive and one's negative, but they are not reciprocals, so this answer is neither. We take a look over here. Slope is 9, slope is 5. Definitely not the same, definitely not opposite reciprocals, so this one is also neither. All right, take a look here. Positive 8, positive 1 eighth, so definitely not the same. They are reciprocals, but notice they are both positive, so they're not opposites either. All right, so this one is also neither. This one could be perpendicular if one of these was positive and one of them was negative. But as we see in this example, they're both positive, so it's neither. Now over here, here we have positive 3 and negative 1 three, one third. Sorry. Remember, whole numbers like 3 can be rewritten as a fraction as over 1. And then we have negative, man, sorry. Negative one third. Notice one's negative, one's positive. We have flipped the numbers, so this answer here is perpendicular. All right. So notice in this exam, in these examples, we didn't have any that were parallel. 
This was close to being parallel. This could have been parallel if this one had been positive two, right? That would, means that they would match with positive two and positive two. Or technically we could have said that they would have been parallel if this one had been negative two where this was negative two and that was negative two. Okay, um, but no examples of parallel in this case. Okay, now this is going to easily be the most difficult part of the test, or at least in my opinion, I believe it'll be the most difficult part of the test. Um, you have to create equations of lines based off of given points and based off of slopes. Okay, uh, obviously in this example, we're going to graph it. On your test, you do not have to graph it because it's online, uh, but please feel free and pl I please encourage you to use Desmos, the website Desmos. Uh, it's a graphing calculator um, to help uh, double check your work. Okay, so write the equation of a line that passes through the point three, four. So it has to pass through three, four. Over one, two, three, up one, two, three, four. Right, it has to pass through this point three four right here. One line has to be parallel. One line has to be perpendicular to the the line with the equation y equals negative three x plus three. All right, so let's graph that again. You don't have to graph it, but it's sometimes it's nice to have a visual. So we see that our y intercept is positive three one two three positive three here, and our slope is negative three or negative three over one. So, all right, so we go down one, two, three, over one. We go down one, two, three, over one. Down one, two, three, over one. And you can also go up one, two, three, but to the left one. Up one, two, three, and to the left one. Now, notice I'm drawing a bunch of points. You do not have to, but since I am not the most incredible artist, drawing more points means I'm more likely to draw a straight line. Okay, so if let's use some different colors. Uh, we'll do parallel in red and we'll do um, perpendicular in like an orangey color. Okay, so parallel, remember parallel means same slope as the given line. So it has to have the same slope and go through this point right here. So our slope or M is definitely going to be negative three because it has to be exactly the same. And remember, it has to pass through this coordinate, three, four. Three is an X value, four is a Y value. Our equation is always the same, Y equals MX plus B. All right, so we just plug in our values. Y is four is equal to M. We said our slope or M is negative three. X, our value there is three plus B. Plus B, we don't know what B is, that's what we're trying to find. So now we solve, four is equal to negative three times three is negative nine plus B. So that's a B, remember, not a six. So now we solve for B, we have to add nine to both sides and we get B is equal to four plus nine is 13, which means that our equation, if we have M and we have B, we just plug them in, y is equal to negative 3x plus 13. And this line should pass through this point and it should uh, be parallel to the blue line. So notice our y-intercept is plus 13, but if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Notice our graph only goes up to 10, but that's okay. We know if it was up 1, 2, 3, it'd be about there, 13, okay? And if our slope, again, is negative 3, we go down 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1. Look at that. It does pass through our point. That's awesome. Down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1. That seems like a good enough amount of points for me. All right. I'm not trying to draw the most amazing line, but pretty good, pretty straight. And we see that these lines are parallel to each other. They don't intersect. And bonus points, we cross through our coordinate that we are supposed to cross through here at 3, 4. So now let's create an equation for our parallel line. All right, again, if we know that the slope of a perpendicular line, sorry, perpendicular line has to be the opposite reciprocal of our original slope, all right, so that means if this original slope was negative, this one has to be positive. And if we flip the numbers, 3 over 1 becomes 1 over 3. And again, we use the same equation, y equals mx plus b. All right, again, we still have to use these same coordinates, so y is still 4 
our slope is one third times x, our x is still three, and we still don't know what b is. So we simplify four equals one times three is three, three divided by three is one plus b. Then we subtract one, subtract one, and we end up, those cancel and we end up with b equals three. Four minus one is three. Okay, so now we have our m, we have our b. Our whole equation now is y is equal to one third x plus three. All right, because b equaled three. All right, so y equals one third x plus three. So now we plot this line. Our y-intercept is at positive three, up one, two, three, right? We're intersecting here. That's good. We want it to intersect because remember, it's a perpendicular line to our original blue line. Okay, if you were unaware, this was our blue line. Let me go back to orange. Okay, and our slope is up one over three. So go up one over one, two, three. Look at that. We passed through our point just like what we wanted to. Keep going up one over one, two, three, up one over one, two, three. Again, you don't have to draw this many points. Uh, it just helps me make sure that my line is going to be straight down one over to the left, one, two, three. All right, and then we draw that line in. And again, look, this line is perpendicular to our original blue line, and it passed through our given point three, four. Okay, so again, you don't, on the test, you don't have to actually graph it, uh, but sometimes it's nice to see it as a visual, which kind of brings me to my next point. Please use the website Desmos uh, to graph your lines to double check. Uh, it could be really helpful while you're taking your test. All right, uh, good luck, study, make sure you're working hard. Uh, come to academic support if you need any help. Good luck on your test next class. Go team, go Mustang.